You are good. You are kind. You are more than this. I'm lost for words. Trying to describe you. Elohim, Elelion, Alishelewi. Your greatness is all I see. There is nothing you cannot do. There's no mountain you cannot move. If you have said it, then you will do it. You have a track record of keeping your word. You're not about to stop doing it now. You are mighty, oh. Oh, Lord, 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 you are mighty, oh. You are mighty, oh. You are mighty, oh. I you, Take me to explain this song. Oloru Agbaye is Yoruba for God of the Universe. And Shebi Wole Bonjoru. It means. He that is wrapped in the clouds. <laughs> These are God. <laughs> it's bigger than my mind. Oh Lord, I buy you. are my you. Oh Lord, I buy you. You are my you. Let me all up on your You shed, we have overcome, discharged and acquitted for life. Then you gave us the right to your holy name, the scepter of power and strength. There is nothing you cannot change, Baba. There's no bondage you cannot break. If he has said it, then he will do it. He has a track record of keeping your word. He's not about to stop doing it now. Oh Lord, you are mighty, oh. You are mighty, oh. Oh Lord, you are mighty, oh. You are mighty, oh. Oh Lord, you are mighty, oh. You will do it. You have the track record of keeping your word. You're not about to stop doing it now. There is nothing he cannot do. Who is that mountain that he cannot move? If he has said it, then he will do it. He has a track record of keeping his word. 
and he's not about to stop doing it now. Oh, you're not about to stop doing it now. Oh, you're not about to stop. You're not about to stop doing it now. I've seen you move, you move the mountain, you split the Red Sea in half. And you're, you're not about, about to stop doing it now. You healed cancer, you healed diseases bigger than the mad eyes can see. You're not about to stop doing it now. I've seen you move, you move the mountains, and you're not about. You're not about to stop doing it now. This is our season of abundance. Overflow, and it's not about to stop. You're not about to stop doing it now. You healed cancer, healed tumors, healed masses, and he's not about to stop. You're not about to stop doing it now. Yeah, you're not about to stop doing it now. You're not about to stop doing it now. Yeah, you're not about to stop doing it now.
mighty, maker of heaven and earth, mighty, you are mighty, oh, oh, oh. mighty, you are mighty, mighty, oh, oh, oh. mighty, 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 he is mighty, mighty, he is mighty, mighty, he is mighty, 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 m
Father, we thank you, we bless you, we exalt your name, that you are mighty, and there's nothing you cannot do. We thank you for what you've done already, all that you've done, all that you are doing, and all that you will do, because you are mighty, mighty in power. We thank you, Lord, we bless you, in Jesus' name. Come on, let's shout, Amen. Amen. Awesome. Awesome. There's nothing he cannot do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. You may be seated. There's nothing he cannot do. Our God is mighty. He's a mighty God. So he's worthy to be praised. He's worthy of our praise. We thank you, Lord. He is mighty. I greet, greet you this afternoon. Once again, in the name that is above every other name. Welcome everyone, our first time guests. We welcome you into this house. God bless you. Amen. Let's go to Isaiah 60 verse 1. Last week, the Spirit of the Lord led me to declare a new season. I think the children can go to their room where they will be taught with the Word of God. Yes, we love to teach the Word in this ministry. So I was led last week to declare a new season. From the book of Isaiah 1, the topic is Arise, shine, for your light has come. Let's go to Isaiah 60, verse 1. He said, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord. Is risen upon you. And the Lord said, I show you the scripture and declare a new season, a new cycle. What does that mean? That means the old cycle is gone. The old cycle is gone. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1. He said, to everything, there is a season and a time. To every purpose under the earth. God is a God that changes season. God is a God that changed time. When we were born... God did not give us any gifts. I know there's a talent. Maybe you come with those talents. But what he gave us is time. We were born in a time. We were given time on earth. So the Bible says, to everything, there's a season and a time for every purpose. Last week I declared, the Lord told me by the unction of the living God to declare a new season. What does that mean? What is season? Before I go to, to start teaching and preaching, what is season? A season is a specific period of time marked by unique and supernatural evidence. A season is a 
specific period of time. Marked by unique and supernatural events. So that means season starts and season finished. So if you are in your season, it's a season of supernatural events. Things will begin to happen for you. When you are in your season, are you still with me? When you are in your season, you do things effortlessly. So in other words, things that have been difficult for you in the past, you would do it effortless. Because you are not doing it by might. You are not doing it by power. But you are doing it by the spirit of the living God. If you have been struggling to get a job. Struggling to be employed. When you move into your new season, there will no more struggle. The employer that is not calling you will begin to call you. Things that have been difficult will be made simple because God changed season. So when you are in your season, you do things effortlessly. How many in the past been trying to do things? It's like there's a force fighting against you. There's something blocking you from moving forward. You're having challenges in life. But when you move into your season, whatever it is that's been challenging you, God is going to move it out of the way. You are in your new season. I said you are in the season of supernatural events. You see supernatural favor. In the new season, in the old season, favor hardly come. You pray for favor, but you don't have favor. Come on, I mean, I've experienced that. But when you move to a new season, you don't need to pray for favor anymore. Your prayers that have been praying is not wasted. Those prayers, God will begin to answer those prayers. I prophesy to three people here. I prophesy to five people here that you have entered a season of favor. Uncommon favor. Unusual favor. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In this season, I want you to expect it. I'm not just saying it. I'm speaking by the unction of the Holy Ghost. Favor. Uncommon favor. Unusual favor. Unmerited favor. In every area of your life. In the name of Jesus. So you see supernatural favor. You see full of provision. Hallelujah. God move us from season of nothing to season of just enough and to season of more than enough. You are in a season of more than enough. You are in a season of abundance in the name of Jesus Christ. I say in the name of Jesus Christ. I say in the name of Jesus Christ. There will be full provision. I said there will be full provisions. How many of you God has given vision? Personal vision, family vision, ministry vision. Let me see your hands. And how many of you have the provision for the vision? There's no end. Oh my goodness. But the good news is you have entered 
a season where provision will be provided in the name of Jesus. Because listen to me, God does not give vision without the provision. God, if God have given you a vision, there's a provision for the vision. Provision always provided before the vision. Then the vision. Are you with me? Because his name is Jehovah Jireh. His name is provider. He provides for us. That's why in creation, mankind was not created first. When were we created? Which day? The last day of creation. The seventh day, God rested. The half day of the sixth day, he created, guess what? Animals. According to your scripture. And what does he create last? No. He created animal first half of the sixth day. On the second half of the sixth day, the way he created changes. No, you didn't see that? It changes. It was different. We were not created the same way he created the animals and the fish. I hear what I'm saying. He called everything into existence. Oh God. I learned from God that whatever I want, I have to speak it. If you don't speak it, you don't have it. If you want it, you have to speak it, you have to declare it, and it's going to come to pass. God said, let there be light. Let there be demarcation between light and darkness and the walls. He parted the land from water. He spoke it into existence. But for man, he didn't speak it into existence. Uh-huh. He didn't speak it into existence. Everything else is pocket into existence and they happen. Now, the second half of the six days, after the first half, theologians, there's something they call divine pause. There was a pause between the creation of everything and the creation of man. When he was creating everything, he did not pause. Let there be light. Let there be fish. Let there be cat. Let there be fish. Let there, let there be steak. Let there be, let there be cow. Let there be goat. Let there be this and let there be that. You know why he's doing that? Because he knows that some of you like to eat beef and some of you like fish because his name is Jehovah Jireh. He provides for us before. <laughs> He knows. So God provided first. He gave provision first. Then the vision. Adam was not yet created. Eve was not yet created. But what we will need, what we will ever need, He provided. Because His name is Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh is our provider. If you give him vision, provision is already provided. It's already provided. I was trusting God one time for funding. God tell me, you know, every time you've been praying, you've been praying, give me and give me. I want provision for my vision. I want provision. I fasted. I want provision. God said, stop crying to me. You are praying the wrong prayer. 
Give me that. Some of you are praying. Give me funding for my vision. Give me, no, no, no. The provision is already there. Don't ask him to give you. Ask him for you to discover it. Lord, open my eyes that I might see what you have provided. That's a prayer of faith. Don't change my prayer. Yes, but he says, stop it. Give me, give me. I give you assignment. Don't you know I'm a good God? Don't you know my name is Jehovah Jireh? I am your provider. America is not your provider. Don't get upset with me. It's not my provider. President Biden is not my provider. And President Trump, when he was there, is not my provider. God is my provider. They don't even know how I eat. They don't know how I make it. But Jehovah is my provider. Hallelujah. I have to change my prayer. Say, Lord, open my eyes. That I may what? See what you have already provided. Are you hear what I'm saying? So God is a good God. Can I hear amen? amen. So this season expects supernatural event. This season, things that you've been struggling to do will come effortly, effortlessly. See supernatural favor. See provision. God already provided. Amen. See doors opening for you. Every doors of opportunity that have been closed, I pray that it will begin to open for you in the name of Jesus. Your season is the time of God's favor. This season is a time of God's favor. See, doors begin to happen. Now, what do we expect in this season? Number one, we went over it over that last week. Abundance and enlargement. Abundance and enlargement. We read the story of Peter last week. Luke 5, 1 to 7. Peter went fishing. Peter fished all night. And in the morning, he was about, someone say what? Roll out? <laughs> Peter has taught when? All night. Peter was a professional what? Fisherman. In fishing, you go where? Deep sea. He went deep sea, there was no fish. Then he came to the shore. Came out of the boat. There were two boats parking there. He came out and they were doing what? Washing their net. And Jesus showed up. Jesus what? Showed up. I speak to you that God, Jesus, will show up in your situation. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I speak to somebody that wants to shut down their business. Uh, that Jesus will come, will come into your life, will come into your business. Peter was about to want to go home. The Bible said they were watching they were, their nets. And Jesus came. And he told Simon, he went to Simon Bob. He said, Put it, push it in a little bit. It's not over yet. When your light has come, it's not time to pack up. It's not time to roll out. It's time to roll in. It's time to restart your business. It's time for abundance. It's time for expansion. It's time for increase. It's time for more than enough because your light has come and Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus showed up and the first thing Jesus did he began to teach the word of God. Let me ask you, was there, were there fish there? Come on, talk to me. Were there fish before the, Peter showed up? There was no fish in the deep sea. 
Do you believe there will be fish in the shallow? No. Then when Jesus came, he began to do what? Teach the word of God. As he began to teach the word of God, I truly believe as the fish heard the voice of the master, every fish that be hiding came to me. And they came. And they came. And they came. When Jesus finished teaching, he told Peter, throw your net nets. Remember we discussed this last week? Throw what? Nets for a catch. And Peter said something. He said, Master, I've taught all night. What he was telling Jesus is that I'm a professional fisherman. I've been fishing all my life. When there's no fish, there's no fish. He said, but at your word, in this season, you don't need, you won't do things the way you used to do it. You will do it based on the instruction of God. Based on the direction of God. We are used to do things the way the world is doing it. Or we are used to do things before the way they used to do things. This time will be unconventional. Not the way you used to do that. Not the way your family did that. God will give you an instruction how to do it. Hallelujah. Because we are in a supernatural season. Unconventional. I remember one time too, we were doing uh, a, a, a transaction, a project we were working on years back. And I pray, and we pray, and we pray, and we pray. Nothing happened. Guess what? We fasted. Nothing happened. I'm serious. Nothing happened. One day we were praying. I'm praying. I'm praying. And God spoke. Actually, he didn't speak. He gave a vision. And it was a bottle. Give me that bottle. How do you drink from this bottle? You take the what? And then what? You drink it. If you don't Take the cup off and put it in your mouth. Water will come out. Right? Come on, talk to me, church. Right? This is the conventional way. Right? Right? If you don't take it off, you can't drink from it. You can't do this. Nothing is going to come out. But while we are praying, we saw a vision. Water begins to come from the air. I said, What? I thought it's supposed to come from here. This is how we do it. That's how my father did it. And my grandfather and my great, 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 great grandfather, that's how it is done. But I'm telling you, you are in the season of supernatural. Things will begin to happen unconventional. Not the way you think it's going to happen. The way Jesus wanted it to happen. Guess what? Because the devil knew he's going to come here. So the devil is waiting to strike you or to push you or to stop it from you drinking. 
God said, I got you. He said, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways and my thoughts are higher than your daughter. I am smarter than the devil. The devil don't know everything. I know everything. I can create a way where there's no way. I can create a river in the wilderness. Yeah. Yeah. Unconventional. The devil is waiting for you here. But God said, I got you. Because you have entered a new season. Season of supernatural. Season of favor. Because I am God. I am the creator. I will make things happen. Even I can alter nature for you. God will alter nature. That's miracle. He told the children of Israel, say, I got you. I will take you through the long journey. I will take you through the Red Sea. Man cannot walk on the Red Sea. Because I am God, I will turn river to be a block. I will turn river to be wall. And you will walk on a dry ground. I prophesy over somebody in this season, you will walk on a dry ground. In this season, Red Sea will part for you. In this season, a season of supernatural. Somebody say, yeah, yes. It's my season. 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 It's my season of miracle. It's my season of supernatural. It's my season of more than enough. I believe it. I believe it. God said it. God said it. I believe it. That settles it. God said it. I believe it. That settles it. I'm expecting my miracle. I'm expecting my overflow. My favor. My supernatural event. Yeah. 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 Oh God. Oh God. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Because we serve a mighty God. Be ready. Be ready to receive the unexpected. Unexpected. In the name of Jesus. I'm prophesied today. Over your life. I'm prophesied today. Miracle will come forth. Increase will come forth. Abundance will come forth. We are in a season that will speak what we want to manifest. We speak what we want to see. God said, let there be light. And it happened. In the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody give him praise. 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 Oh God. Oh God. Peter. Peter was washing his net. The day was over. There was no fish. He has lost time. God don't only restore money, but he also restore time. Every wasted time will be recovered. Every wasted time will be recovered. In the name of Jesus. Listen to this. Peter said, Master, we have taught all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, it don't make sense. There's no fish. We went to the deep, to the deep end. There were no fish at the shallow end. You told me to cast my net. I'm a professional fisherman. Normally, we don't do it that way. But at your word, Peter walked on the word of God. He didn't walk on his own experience. He didn't walk 
on his own experience. He didn't work on what he knows. He worked on the word of God. I'm telling you in this season, you're going to walk by the word of God. It doesn't matter how they do it or how they used to do it. It doesn't matter. When God said it, believe it and walk on it. Watch this. Watch this and I'll finish there. There's one place we want to go today. God wants me to declare miracles. Today, if we are sick, you will be healed. Pain will go. And breakthrough will come miraculously. But listen to this. And when they had done this, even though it doesn't make sense, even though it turned all night, even though they were on the shallow end, even though there was no fish in the deep end where they're supposed to get fish, but because Jesus said it, because Jesus what? Said it. He believed it. And they obeyed it. Guess what? And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish. And their net was breaking. Your net will not break. I say your net will not break. But if you don't prepare, your net will break. We always prepare before event. That's why I'm teaching this message. For you to prepare what is coming. Peter did not prepare. Peter was not proactive. I guess he didn't know what was coming. When you prepare, if you don't prepare, you will repair. Peter, after that breakthrough, his net is, was messed up. Because, why? He didn't prepare for that miracle. He didn't prepare for abundance. So in order for him to fish again, he has to go and do a repair the net. You will not repair. You will prepare. You will prepare so that you will not repair. Yesterday, Pastor Masha was supposed to give us uh, good things for the back to school bash. So there's a lady, Pastor Masha, knew. So they decided, they said Pastor Masha to come Saturday 8.30 in the morning that he will give just about 20 bags, 20 backpacks and some little, little things. You know Pastor Masha sharp in the spirit. <laughs> he, she said, I wanted to go alone. But based on the message that you preached Sunday, God told Jesus, told Peter to throw his nets. And Peter only had one net. When you read the scripture, he threw net. I said, yay. He missed it because he was not prepared. So, Pastor Peter said, oh, I got that message. I'm not going alone. I'm going to take three other vehicle with me. So that our net will not crack. Will not break. Guess what happened? The word of God is true. You know what happened? She went. How many people were here yesterday? Sunday? I mean yesterday. They went to the place. Pastor Marshall's car was full to the team. I don't even know. Maybe the tire was breaking. I'm serious. They pack it and stuff it and stuff it and stuff it. Then the second vehicle. Who is that? Ria. Oh, so uh, Sonia. Sonia also car was full, full. The back seat, full. The trunk, full. Then, who's the next one? Mitch. He has an SUV. SUV was full and full and full and full. I said, yeah, we prepare. We did prepare enough. So next time, 
We're going to drive about 20 cars. Or trucks. Next time I'm getting a you all. A big you all. Not only one, we're going to get about three or four. You all, because we prepare, we are ready for abundance. We are ready for increase. Are you hearing me? But thank you, Pastor Mesha grabbed the message. He said, I won't go alone. Even when they came yesterday, they said, man, if we know, I could have taken more cars. But God is a God of second chance. So call up the lady. Can we come Monday? Can we come Monday? Or Tuesday? I'm going to call everybody that have SUV or car. Come. Just come. Come. Abba. Yeah, this time we have three SUV. No. Thank God for that. At least we have three. But next time we're going to have more. You prepare. You prepare. They even gave, gave us what we didn't ask for. I'll show you. The word of God. We are in a season. We speak what we want to see. That's how God operates. He speaks things in existence. Call those things that be not as though they were. Even though they are not. But when you call it, they will come into existence. If you don't speak it, it's not going to happen. Say, I am blessed. I am blessed. This is my season of increase. Opportunities looking for me. An opportunity will locate me. I speak it with my mouth in the mighty name of Jesus. Those things that have been difficult, that have been difficult, they will be made simple in the name of Jesus. Because I know I have authority on my tongue. The Bible says, we shall declare a thing, it shall be established. I declare today that I am prospering. I declare today I am blessed. I am rich. I am blessed. I am healed. I am delivered. The God is with me. It's my season of favor. Of favor. Of favor. I believe it. I declare it. Let me see manifestation. In the name of Jesus. Yes. 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 I'm walking in my favor. I'm walking in favor. In the name of Jesus. Supernatural events will begin to happen. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I believe it. I believe it. And so shall live so. Give him praise and glory. Come on, give him praise and glory. Come on, give him praise and glory. So watch this. Watch this. Let me get here. So it was so much. So they signaled to their partner in the other boat to come and help them. Well, it's too late, maybe. It's not too late, but maybe. You know, we can call our partner and tell the lady we are coming back Monday. They get help. In other boats to come and help them. And they came and filled both of the boats. I got the revelation there. They came and they filled what? But Jesus only entered one. God told Abraham, no, you get it? I will bless you. And you will be a blessing. When God bless you, it will overflow. And it's not only for you. You're going to remember me too. And my wife. And the members of the church. And the praise and worship. Because when God bless you, he bless you real good. When God bless you, it's not just for you. God have your friends in mind. God have church member in mind. And God have me in mind too. And the church will shout amen. I said the church will shout amen. Say Lord. Say Lord. Lord. 
Bless me. So I will be a blessing. In the name of Jesus. This is a prophetic teaching. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm telling you. It's a prophetic teaching. Say, Lord, bless me. So I will be a blessing. In the mighty name of Jesus. When God begins to bless you, even your community will ask you, where do you go to church? <laughs> your community, they're going to bless you that something has changed about you. Something has changed about you. So guess what? We want to be your friend. Where do you go to church? Hallelujah. And when God bless you, bring them here. Then I will finish. I got to go. I got to go to next. And they came and filled both the bowl. So that they begin to they begin to sing. I will stop here. Listen to this. Peter's failures were turned into outright success and fulfillment. Peter's failure because he turned all night. That's what he was telling Jesus. I've turned all night. Fish bite more at night. Not during the day. I have to go fishing. I'm not fishing very well. I'm going to take some of the men there. One of these days we go deep sea fishing. We go early in the morning. Fish bite more in the deep. They don't stay at the shore because there's so much noise. They go in the water in the deep. At night, and they bite a lot. That's what Peter was telling Jesus. I've told all night when they're supposed to be fish, there was no fish. And you telling me to throw my net in the shallow end for my provision? I will not do it. But because you said it, I will do it. He did it. And that's what happened. In this season, I pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord will turn all your failure into outright success and fulfillment in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every time you have lost, the Lord will return it. The Lord will restore it. Every money you have lost, the Lord will restore it. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you think it's over? It's not over yet. It's not over. Get Jesus involved. So this season, the Messiah shall rescue. He will rescue you from affliction of failure. Oh God, listen to me. Failure is an affliction. It's an affliction. And the devil lies to attack you with the affliction of failure. But this season is over. I said, this season is over. In the name of Jesus Christ. What God will do, all your failure, he will turn it around. He will turn it to success. He will turn it to fulfillment. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Failure in business. Failure in career. In the name of Jesus, God will turn it around. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, ah, do I have time? Let's go quick. Number two. Remember number one? Expect abundance and enlargement. When I finish this series, then I will begin to teach how to enter the new. That's a way you enter the new season. We we'll begin to teach that. Number two, power for miracles comes when Messiah visits. Power for miracles comes when Messiah visits. Remember, arise and shine. Why? Because you're what? Your light. Who is the light? Jesus. So when Jesus visits, you begin to have miracles, signs, and wonders. Let me show you a story here in the Bible. Look. 7, 11 to 16. Now, it, 
it happened the day after. Now, the day after. When you read the previous verse of verses, Jesus just did a miracle with the centurion. Who remember that? Thank you. With the centurion that called the man, great is your faith. Jesus didn't even go to his house. You remember the story? Very good. After that, then this story. So the man came to Jesus. The man did not even have relationship with God. The man was outside of covenant. When I say outside of covenant, means he had no relationship with God. But he heard about Jesus. And he went to Jesus that my servant is asleep. He is there, laying down. And Jesus told the man, go, no, Jesus wanted to go to the man. The man said, you don't even need to come to my house. Oh God, that's another teaching. Jesus said what? You don't need to what? Come to my house. But the man was not saved. The man don't have relationship. But the, listen to this. But the man was in authority. He understood authority. He knew the power of authority. When you have authority, you don't need to come to my house. No, you didn't get it. You didn't get it. You don't need to come to my house to pray for him. Because words are faster than going. Words? <laughs> you didn't hear me. No, you didn't hear me. Words that will speak faster, move faster than going to the house. I remember those days, there was no car. There was no telephone. There, there was no bike. Somebody have donkey. And donkey moves so slow. Donkey move on so slow. And what helped the man is in authority. He understood authority. He said, I understand authority. If I tell my servant to sit down, they must see. Because I operate based on authority. And if you are Jesus, sickness, just speak. Speak. Is there. He move. Words that will speak, he move in the speed of light. The speed of light, he go forth. So this man understood Jesus' authority. He knew that Jesus was in authority. He said, you don't need to come to my house. Just speak the word. Because I understand authority. Jesus was shocked. That what? Do we have this kind of faith? Even though he was not saved. Even though he didn't have a relationship with God. But understood authority. He honored Jesus. So then, after that, I'm going somewhere with that. I don't have time. Then after that miracle, based on what? I'm going to change your theology today. Change it after that, based on what faith. What look, look at the next miracle now? It happened after no, it happened the day after that. He went into a city called Nahim, and many of his disciples went with him, and a large crowd. And, and went, and when he came near the gate of the city, behold, a dead man was being carried out. In other words, to be buried. The only, listen to this, the only son of his mother. And she was a widow. No husband. And a large crowd from the city was with her. When the Lord saw her, when the Lord saw her, she did not see the Lord. 
But the Lord saw her and so many people crying and following this woman. The Lord saw her. She didn't see the Lord. She didn't cry out in faith. But the Lord saw her. The Lord will see you. The Lord will see you. The Lord saw her with affliction. He saw the woman, the only son, is dead. And the husband is gone too. But the Lord saw her. And said in the name of in this season, the Lord will see you. There's some things before you open your mouth and ask, God will give you the miracle. I said, God will give you the miracle. Sometimes we've been praying for some things. Some of us be asking God, where, where, where are you? God, are you still there? Of course he's there. Lord, how long is going to be? But in this season, God will see you with your affliction. God will see you with your pain. God will see you with your sicknesses. God will see what you are going through. I got this. God told the children of Israel, said Moses, I have heard and I have seen the affliction of the children of Israel. How their taskmaster were using you. In the name of Jesus Christ, uh, if your employer is using you and not give you enough money, I prophesy, God will give you a better job. Watch this. Oh God, I have to stop that. And the Lord, when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, do not weep. Then he came and touched the coffin. The Lord what? No, no. Saw her. Right? And the Lord had what? She didn't pray for her son to be resurrected. She's not. All hope were gone. They were actually carrying the boy to be buried. The same as Peter was done for the day. Was washing his net. But this woman, they were going to bury the boy. But the Lord saw her. The woman didn't see Jesus. But the Lord saw her. God didn't give her the miracle because he had great faith. It's good to have faith. We should have faith. We are commanded to have faith. But the Lord did not stop and tell her son, touch the, the coffin, to rise. But God saw and he had what? What is compassion? Pity. Empathy. And he had compassion. Compassion. Not based on the faith. Years back, I used to go to India and do big crusade. Do you believe I experienced and I saw more miracle. God is my witness. And healing and deliverance. Miracle. In India, more than every Christian nation that I've been, God is my witness. One day, was years back, I saw a blind, the deaf, Open and they saw instantaneously. And these people are Hindu. 
These people didn't have a relationship with Jesus. At first, it shook my faith and my belief. If I'm having this more miracle in a city that sometimes they don't have no church. All they have is temple, worshiping cow and dog and this and that. A miracle was happening. I asked God, why? Then I understood the honest. God told me, and I understood. I said, yes, it's good to have faith, especially for believers. But the unbeliever, because God is a God of all flesh. It will heal them even though they don't have faith. God said, because I have compassion. I have compassion on the sick. I have compassion on the weary. And I mean, I've seen more miracles there. But in, in the church where we have faith. Then God told me again, I have compassion on them. I heal them because sometimes <laughs> righteousness is from what? Within, right? But God said, I use external sign of the kingdom to draw them into the kingdom of God. No, you miss me. Do you miss me? Because the kingdom of God is not food and flesh. It's from what? Within. But God flip it. God did what? He flip it. He can do that because he is God. And nobody can question him. He flip it. You know, sometimes we say, we have to be saved first before God heal you. God show me. Say, no. Sometimes I want to heal them first. I want to deliver them first. So they know there's this power. In my name, they will know there's a power in the name of Jesus. So when they heal and deliver, guess what? They want to know more about Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody lift up your hands and I'm going to finish. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. I want you to say this. You say, Lord, have compassion on me and give me miracle. Lord, have compassion on me and give me my miracle. Regardless of my faith level. Regardless of my faith level. Lord, have compassion on me. Have compassion on me. And give me my breakthrough. I'm giving my breakthrough. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, look upon my afflictions. Look upon my trials. Look upon my tribulations. And give me miracles. In the mighty name of Jesus. And in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, touch my family, look upon my compassion, look upon me, Lord, and have compassion on me, and give me a miracle, and give me a new job, and give me a better job, and give me a new business, Lord, come on, cry out, Lord, have compassion on me, and heal me. And deliver me. And set me free. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, give me that financial breakthrough. Have compassion on me. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I thank you. Come on, let's stand on our feet. Let's stand on our feet. Heavenly Father, I thank you. Heavenly Father, I bless your holy name. Have compassion on me. Have compassion on me. And do miracle in my life, in my life, in my life, in my life. Have compassion and have compassion and give me spiritual breakthrough and give me financial breakthrough and give me breakthrough in the mighty name of Jesus. Have compassion, oh Lord. Have compassion, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Because this season is my season of miracle. It's my season of increase. It's my season of abundance. That you have compassion and bring my miracle in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Come on, let's clap our hands and give God praise. Come on, let's have our hands and give God praise. Father, we thank you. 
Father, we bless you. Where you are standing, if you are trusting God for healing, lift up your hands to heaven. For healing, for healing, for healing. In the name of Jesus, I speak healing into your body. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because we enter a new season, every form of affliction, sickness, disease, and infirmity, I command you to depart now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. He bore our pain, he carried our sorrows, and by his stripes we are healed. I command healing into your body in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. If somebody, if you are here trusting God for breakthrough, let me see your hands. I want to pray for you. And that spiritual breakthrough, financial breakthrough, I want to pray for you because we are in a season of breakthrough. Hallelujah. Father, I declare in the name of Jesus, you got the breakthrough already. You want more breakthrough? You got the breakthrough about school. The credit they say they will not take. That you have to start as a freshman. Amen. A few weeks ago, last week, or when? When you get baptized. Oh. oh. We just get baptized, yes. Even your certificate will be ready soon. We will have it next Sunday. When you got baptized, something was broken. Delay was rolled away. Indulgences was moved away. When he got baptized, and she got the what you got the what a call or email, and they say what? All is credit that they don't want to accept. Everything was received. Hallelujah! God is moving expeditiously. God is moving fast. So what that means? That means when you go back to school, it's not a freshman. You will be a what? You will be a junior. It will be a junior. It will be a junior. It will be a junior just for two semesters. They will be a senior. They said they would not accept it. It took an entreaty that. They would not accept it. When you move into your season, everywhere you'll be rejected will be accepted. I'm, tell, I'm, I'm here to prophesy. It's a prophetic message. If you shout amen, it will be so to you. The same way, God turned Peter's failure into outright success and fulfillment. It shall be so to you. What they have rejected, they will be accepted. Where you have applied for job, that they rejected you, I prophesy in the name of Jesus, they will call you. I said they will call you. I said they will call you. Your phone will be ringing. You will receive email in the name of Jesus Christ. Because you have entered a new season. A season of miracle. A season of miracle. A season of breakthrough. The woman of Nahim, she didn't even pray. She didn't even see Jesus. Who know? Maybe she didn't even know who Jesus was. But Jesus saw God will see your affliction. God will see all your trials. God will see all your tribulations. And it will turn into success. It will turn into success. It will turn into a border. In the name of Jesus Christ. She saw the woman crying. Only son. No husband. God will have compassion on you. I didn't finish, but Jesus went. What did he do? The light of the world has arrived in your life. He touched the coffin. What happened? He that was dead, get up and begin to speak. Anything that is dead in your life, come alive. Finances, come alive. Marriages, come alive. He touch it. Next week, I continue. When he touch it, something happened. Those that were carrying the dead, they stood still. They couldn't move anymore. When Jesus touched it, God will change your course. 
Say, Lord, I thank you. I bless you. And I accept, uh, I give you praise and glory. This is my season. This is my season of supernatural event. This is my season of prosperity in Jesus' name. Come on, let's give him praise and glory. Can't give him praise and glory. Let's give him praise and glory. Let's give him praise and glory. One more prayer. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you. Heavenly Father, I bless your holy name. I declare with my mouth that you are my Lord and Savior. And it is you whom I will serve for the rest of my life. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Instruct me, direct me, and I will obey. In your name, I pray. Amen. Is anyone here want to give their life to Jesus before we conclude service? We're going to take our tithe. We're going to take our offering. If not, anyone, Jesus, we all love Jesus. Because you love Jesus, you are saved. The light of God will shine in your life. In Jesus' mighty name. Can we say amen to that? Amen. I'm going to take tithe and offering very quick. If you need envelope, please lift up your hands. Our usher will give you one. Amen. There's a hand here. Let's get ready to give. Amen. Let's get ready to give. While you are preparing, media put on the screens, 2 Corinthians 8, nine, no, 9, 8. 2 Corinthians 9, 8. And God is able to make all grace abound. Let us all give to support the work of the Lord. There's a reason for that scripture. Because sometimes people struggle to give their tithe and to give their offering to the church. God wants us to give. Amen? God loves what? Cheerful giver. Come on, are you a cheerful giver? Amen. If you go to verse 7, it says God loves what? Cheerful giver. Then if you are a cheerful giver, guess what happened? God yeah, you see, seven says, so let each one give as a purpose in his heart, not grungling all necess of necessity. For God loves what? Cheerful giver. Are you a cheerful giver? Come on, what does that mean? Give what? Happily, cheerfully. Amen. Come on, are you giving cheerfully? Amen. Amen. When you bring your offering, Envelope or if you give online, just use your phone to make con contact with the basket. You know, dance a little bit so I know you are cheerful. You know, dance a, a little bit so I know you are happy. You know, he love what? Cheerful giver. As you give your time and your offering, you know, it's not by force, it's by choice. A amen. And it's good to obey God. Amen. So when you obey God, let's go, go to verse 8. You will see the blessing. You will see the blessing there. Verse 8. You know what it said? And God is able to make all grace. How many grace? So that tells me the different kind of grace. Some of you need grace for your work. You need grace for your business. You need grace at home. You need grace for your supervisor. <laughs> you know, they have some tough supervisor. Man, they always come at you. Amen. They're always picking on you. Everybody will be there. They will come to you. So you need grace for them to leave you alone. Amen. There's a grace for that too. You also need grace for them to see the good work that you are doing. Look at Jesus. Jesus saw the woman. Some of us worked so hard, but our supervisor didn't see it. Come on, who can identify with that? You work so hard, you work so hard, but you didn't see it. When you read Genesis, the Bible said that Potiphar saw that God was with Joseph. Go read it. He saw it. 
So you need super, you, 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 you need grace, supernatural grace to abound towards you. That you always will have what? All sufficiency in all things. May have what? Come on, can we say abundance? Can we say abundance? I prophesy we are in the season of abundance. In the name of Jesus, you will experience abundance in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Abundance. Amen. Anybody in the envelope? Me that go to Job 36, 11. Abundance. I mean, trusting God for abundance in this season. Amen. God will give it to you. In Jesus' name. Job 36, 11. Are we ready? The sound can't hear me. Look at that blessing. Come on. Let's read together. One, two, three. Read. And, and some people said prosperity is not biblical. What is that? If they obey, that is the qualification. If you obey and serve God, God don't want us to be poor. If the devil wants you to be poor, so you can pay your tithe, give your offering, and be blessed. Our God is a God of prosperity. That's the word of God. As you obey and pay your tithe and continue to serve God, you will prosper in Jesus' name. If they obey and serve him, they will spend the what? Their days. Days. In what? And what? You know what that means? Some people are rich, but no pleasure. Miserable. Mean. They have so much money, but they are miserable. You will enjoy your prosperity. The word pleasure means enjoyment. You will enjoy prosperity. You will use your prosperity for the furtherance of the kingdom of God. You will use your prosperity to serve God. I don't know about you. I, I am rich. And I'm prospering. Amen. There's nothing wrong for man of God to be rich and prosper. Do you want me to be poor? Hello? You want me to be poor? Even if you want it, it won't come to pass. In the name of Jesus Christ. But I didn't know we are rich. I am rich in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I will use my money for the furtherance of the kingdom of God. I am rich in the spirit. I am rich physically. I am rich materially in the name of Jesus. Listen to me. It is impossible for me to lack. Hello? Maybe you need to start teaching prosperity. It's just some preacher preach it wrong. First is spiritual prosperity. That's what God's saying. Obey and serve God. You are rich. It starts with so. Even oh God. The other time, 3 John 2 1. He said, Above all things. I pray that you what? Prosper. Be in hell as your soul prosper. So your financial and your material prosperity is contingent to your soul prosperity. So in other words, it's from inside out. Yeah. From inside out. If I'm prospering inside, I have to prosper. Yes! Yes! I cannot be prospering inside and outward and poor. Because the spirit controls the natural. If I'm rich in spirit, I'm rich financially. You know what I mean? Oh God. Matthew 6, 33. Seek first. Seek first. Seek. 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 The kingdom of and all his righteousness and all these 
things. Money will look for you. If you don't open your, your door, it will break down your door. I enter your house. I enter your bank account. I will come and teach the principle of the first. That's the problem. People don't teach prosperity right. How can you prosper if you don't understand the principle of the first? If you don't understand ownership and stewardship. Ownership and stewardship. The money that you have. Everything that you have. Belongs to God, come from God. You don't have ownership. It's okay, it's okay, tattoo deed, they have your name to your house, but they come from God yes. and belong to God. Yes. You are just a steward. Yes. People don't understand to be a steward. Yes. If you don't understand the principle of, this, of stewardship and ownership, God cannot bless you. I know my time is over, I got to stop, but somebody needs this. God cannot bless you. That's why it takes so long before God prosper us. Because most people, is me, I, I, I. That I, pad, I, cloud, I, everything nowadays is I, 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 I must go. I, pad, I, cloud, I, I watch. Everything is high. If you want God to bless you, remove the high. Understand this principle. God is the owner. I'm serious. God is what? He's the owner. If you are struggling with your time, it's because you don't understand the principle of the first. You don't understand it. When you understand, and that's what he said, if you obey and serve God. Give your time. Give your offering. God wants to make you a wealth distributor. If you don't understand that principle, how can you give you wealth? You won't give nobody. It's mine. It's mine. I work for it. I pray for it. I fast for it. It's mine. It ain't yours. It's not yours. It come from God. It begin to go. God will give it to you to help others. I got to stop. Principle of the first. It will bless you and bless you and bless you. The devil will not be able to stop it. Come on, let's give. I got to go. I got to go. I will come. I will teach the principle of the force. I will teach ownership and stewardship. You are just a steward. When you have that mentality, you will be a good manager. Amen. Amen. Because you say, just you do whatever you want to do with it. Because if you are a steward, you are responsible and you have to account to the owner. The day will come, God will say, the talent that I give you, the money that I give you, what do you do with that? You've got to understand that principle. And one more thing you need to understand. I, I don't want to. Materialism. Stay away from materialism. Don't let material be an idol in your life. Amen. You are listening to materialism. That's why I block God from blessing some people. It prevents God. Lot. Materialism. It's all Sodom. Whoa! Materialist, materialism. It's okay to drink now. I drink now. But it's not idle in my life. Amen. It's not idle. Amen. I like nice stuff. It's not an idol. Amen. Amen. I give glory to the giver. Yeah. You focus on the giver, not the gift. Amen. Are you hearing me? I like nice stuff. I like, they will tell you, before I become a pastor, I have cars. Name it. Jaguar, I have it. Benz, I have it. SUV, I have it. We live in a big old house. Amen. I work for it. God bless me. Amen. Amen. But those things, 
are not an idol. And like that car, even today I see like nice stuff. Amen. They're not an idol. They're material. Amen. But God will worship him. You go to dress now, you know, you get your dressing now, your bling, bling, bling. You know? It's good. But don't let it be an idol. Amen. Don't let car be an idol. Amen. Amen. Now some people, they have a car. No, old car, the rim over there is more expensive than the car. Time for church, they're cleaning cars. That becomes an idol. Yeah. <laughs> that becomes an idol. When you follow those instructions, those three, God will prosper you. Amen. He's looking for conduit. Amen. And the revelation he will give you, he gave me three M. Make, manage, multiply. Amen. And I'm done. Make. <laughs> Some people don't know how to make. Some people know how to make, they don't know how to manage. If you're not a good steward, God will give you more. I don't want to teach all of this. My time is gone. Amen? Sometimes we always think we are accountable responding for 10%. And I'm sorry, pastor. Pastors, we, we always teach. God, years ago, tell them, no. Teach them 10, but also tell them 90 as well. Most people think the 10 just to God, after God, the 90, I do whatever. That means you are not a good steward. Amen. You have to be a good steward of the world, 100. Amen. That's stewardship. Amen? Amen? So make, manage, multiply. A prophesy as God give you wisdom, you learn how to make. You know how to what? Manage. I know how to what? That is the level God wants to take us. So you have time to serve God and let your money work for you. Amen. Now we're still working for money. Father, have compassion on us. We're still working and working. God will get you to that level and work and work and work. For, deliver us from it. That your money begin to work, work for you while you work for God. Amen. Come on, let's stand on our feet and give our offering. Enough teaching and preaching. Amen. You have your offering, your tithe. Come on, let's be good steward. Let's always bring our tent and offering to the house of the Lord. I always said, if you cannot live off of 90, I truly believe you can live off of 100. So I better give my tent and receive the blessings of God. Amen. Amen. And for the record, I'm not preaching this. I'm saying this. To get salary, I don't get salary. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. I don't. I have project in return for God to bless. Amen. 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 So me too can be a blessing. Amen. 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 I'm not waiting for time and offering. Amen. It's not enough. Amen. <laughs> it's not enough. It's not enough. I have a big project that I'm working on. That I trust God, I will do this, but you bless that for me. Amen. They know, you know, something we are working on. I'm working on a lot of stuff. For God, you bless that. For God, do your work. Amen. So, me too can be a blessing. I can buy land for the church. If Tim Day is, telling, is here, I will tell you what we are working on. Pray that you work out for the church, for this church. Amen. Where's Tim Day? He's not there. There's something we're working on. For this church. Amen. So as we do that, the probably is outside, it's a businessman. We're working on trust God for God to give us that. We get the release for this church. Amen. As we believe we are in that season. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We exalt your name for the tithe and offering. Father God, if everything that we have belongs to you, comes from you in the name of Jesus. As your people give in the name of the Lord, I pray you will bless them exceedingly, abundantly in the name of Jesus. You said in your word in Job 36, 11, if they obey and serve you, you will give them prosperity and they will enjoy the years of their days. Father, we thank you. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bring your tithe and offering. Follow the direction of the usher from the back. Cheerful giver, come bring it. Come. 
No music. She wants to dance. Okay. about your season of miracle. And there's so many people just say, okay, well, I'm just sitting here to receive. So I'm just here, sitting here to listen. And God said, no. By virtue of you open your mouth and say, I receive it in the name of Jesus. The Lord said, literally, when you say, I receive it, that word receive becomes a catalyst in your life and it will start a stream of miracles for you. And I decided to look up the word catalyst. Amen. The word catalyst, glory to God, it means fuel. It means spark. It means drive. It means energize. It means power. It means to stimulate. It means to move. And one of the last things I love, it means a trigger. So by you opening your mouth and say, now what he's preaching, don't forget I know some inside information. He actually had another word to preach and God told him, no. I need you to go back here. Are you all hearing me? So this is outside of him. So if you want to go home the same way you came, that's your business. But God said, just by you opening your mouth and say, I receive the season of miracle. It will become a catalyst for you. Amen. Amen. So on the count of three, 
One, two, three, I receive it! In the name of Jesus, we're going to do it sometimes. I receive it! In the name of Jesus, I receive it! In the name of Jesus, I receive it! I receive my miracle! I receive my miracle! And last but not least, with everything that you have, if you truly believe it, you shout it out! I receive it! Amen. Amen. Awesome, 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 awesome. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance and the Lord give you peace. Let the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, let it guide your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus, in Jesus' name. And the church shout. Do you receive it? I receive it! In Jesus' name. Amen.